Please uh, welcome Dan Cuellar. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for that intro, Dante. Well, I don't know. Did anyone here go to Selenium Comp this year? Anybody? Uh, like five people. Uh, well, I gave a lightning talk on this little project I had on the side called, at the time, iOS Auto, which was used to automate iOS apps. And I was hoping to get it kicked off then, but it didn't happen. So I'm here again trying to get that started. I think, you know, creating an open source project is a lot like writing a hit single. You know, it takes several efforts and cram it down people's throat and eventually maybe they'll like it. I don't know. Um, anyway, I think there's a lot of value here and I'll go, I'll talk about it. And we now have four contributors on this, so there's some new and exciting stuff since I last showed it to a small audience in London. Um, so the, my talk is called Setting Apple's UI Automation Free with Appium. Uh, I'm Dan. I'm the lead software engineer on the test team at Zeusk. I manage the testers. Some of them are here. You want to stand up? They help me write some of this? Uh, they don't want to. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll start with an overview. Um, I call this talk Setting UI Automation Free because if anyone's ever used Apple's UI automation, it's their little JavaScript framework where you can write tests. The big pain point is it lives in this ecosystem sandbox which you can only use Apple approved things inside of and can't really do much that's not in there. And so I find that very limiting. And the other thing is most of us write our automation in a language other than JavaScript. I don't think that was ever one of the big choices. It tends to be Python versus Java versus Ruby. You know, we're a .NET shop, but not many people do that. Um, so you're limited. You have to rewrite everything to work with this framework. And then you find out later you actually can't rewrite it. So my goal is to set it free and let you write in whatever language you want and use the supported <coughs> automation infrastructure. So after talking about the problem, we'll talk about the solution. Uh, the main points of that would be to run it from the command line, break it out of JavaScript, and control it in real time. Then I'll give a quick one slide thing on how to code with Appium. It's actually really simple. You'll see that uh, similar to a few things here and different from a lot of things shown here, this setup is like one step and then you can work with any app. You won't need the source code. You won't need to modify the source code. All you need is the app. Um, go through a demo and then I'll just have some little odds and ends that I thought would be fun to talk about. So the problem uh, with UI automation, you have to run it in instruments.app. So that's, that's already pretty inconvenient because we don't, can't modify the source to instruments.app. There's no you know, magic Apple script library to instruments.app where we can go in and control it. Uh, it must be written in JavaScript while you know, for a web developer, JavaScript's a great language. For a tester, it's sort of foreign territory. Uh, I don't think there's a JavaScript, no, there's a JavaScript Selenium web driver, there is. WD, yeah, someone wrote that, but most test automation isn't written in JavaScript. Uh, and people should have a choice. If they don't want to use JavaScript, they shouldn't have to. Um, it does not support real-time control. In mean, instruments, you give it a script and it runs it, and when it's done, it dumps some results to you. I think, you know, we'd like a little more feedback as we go. Uh, many useful JavaScript methods are not available. You can't, as far as I know, use jQuery in it. Uh, there's definitely no HTTP requests in the UI automation JavaScript. Uh, it's difficult to build libraries and reuse code, so your tests become brittle and expensive to maintain and write. Uh, it does not integrate with any of your existing Selenium automation. It's a different animal, it's a separate world. Uh, and it requires, and I guess other, actually that's on the wrong slide, I won't talk at that point. <laughs> so anyways, the solution, and I promise you, it's hacktastic. <laughs> it's called Appium. So what do we need? We need command line control. We need to run on a simulator and on a real device. We need to run in languages other than JavaScript. We need real-time control. We should not require developers to modify their app in any way. And we should not require the source code to an app. These were the guidelines behind this project. So first off, command line control. Well, this is how you do it. Apple was kind enough to give us a little Unix shell program that will launch instruments for us. And you can see you can give it you know, uh, you can give it the path to your app and you can give it the device you want to run on. And so there we are, command line control of instruments. That's good. Uh, also useful, I put the syntax for Xcode build in there if you want to build your stuff in the command line too. Apple doesn't make it entirely obvious that you can build an app from the command line. And you can force it to iPhone or iPad, which is really useful. So breaking it out of JavaScript, this is my sort of favorite part of the project. And I think this is the most difficult part. 
because a lot of people can just read the documentation and the man pages and figure out how to use instruments. But uh, getting a program that doesn't want to talk on the internet to talk on the internet is a little different battle. So the main problem being there's no way to talk to the web. There's no HTTP web requests in UI automation JavaScript. So with iOS 4, they added this perform task with path arguments timeout method, which can run all of your favorite shell commands. So if you have friends like curl and Python, I think those can do web requests. So um, basically, whenever we need to talk to the internet, we just shell it out. And uh, well, sometimes we Apple script it out, too, because there's a lot of interesting things you can control with Apple scripts. One example was there's a permissions dialog that you get sometimes, and Apple script can fill that out. That's one of the, in that weird like part of my resume where there's weird skills that don't matter, like right next to state ice hockey champion, there's like Apple script ninja. <laughs> and like clip art guru. Those are like my two things that I know too much about. Um, so how does it all work? So we feed instruments a JavaScript program, I call it the bootstrap, that uh, it's just a loop. And what it does is it sits there polling the file system for commands. Uh, and then when it finds a sequentially numbered file, it reads, it runs eval. They did give us eval in JavaScript, which is all I need, you know. <laughs> and then we write out the response to a corresponding sequentially numbered file. I use Python to do it, but you could write it with whatever you want. Um, so we just have a server sitting there. It knows, oh, the next command is 1.txt or whatever, right? So it sits there, and then when 1.txt shows up, it's like, oh, let me eval that and spit the results back out. And it formats them in XML and then drops you know, 1-b or whatever, .txt to the file system. And so you can see from any language, you can write a text file, send it a command, read the response, and then go from there, right? Also, uh, you may notice Francois' project and mine use the exact same technique to control uh, UI automation. So he uses curl. He has like a little proxy web service running, and he curls out to pull for commands and curls out responses. A little bit neat and neater, but file system works just fine. Um, anyways, so the result. Now you can control UI automation from any language that can write files or make web requests. And I think that's almost all the languages. Like, I think even Quick Basic can do that. So if you wanted to write like quick basic automation, you could do that. Um, you can reuse all your existing automation infrastructure. This is great for us. At Zeus, we have .NET automation. So we have all these cool little test APIs that can manipulate our website in interesting ways. And I don't have to rewrite all those. Uh, we can run tests in a web browser and an iOS device at the same time. I had a cool video of that that I'm not going to show. But you can you run a Selenium test with an Appium test and actually, more interestingly, um, Appium does implement WebDriver, so you can code with Selenium. So your favorite Selenium bindings, you can use them with Appium. So I move on. Coding with Appium. So it's actually really easy to install. It's really just one step. I put five here, but it's really one, because you will have Xcode already installed, probably, if you want to run automation, or if you want to work with apps. Command line tools probably will be installed, too, maybe not. But you just need to set up a .appium file, and you just need to give it a password and a username just for the security prompt. And actually, someone's talk, the Moet person, there's a way to get around this and we won't need this anymore. So there'll be no setup required. I could just take this whole thing away. And then optional if you want to write with Selenium bindings, just, you know, I put easy install pip because I had someone try and go through the install instructions. They're like, I don't have pip. What's pip? It's like, ah, just easy install pip. Anyway, so you'll requ it requires bottle and then it requires Selenium if you want to use WebDriver but pretty easy to install those. And to run it, uh, you can check it out from that URL. We also have appium.io if you want to get it from there. Uh, and just to launch it, it's one command, uh, you know, Python, appium, py, path to your app. Uh, if you want to run a web driver server, you know, hook it into your grid or whatever. Just same thing, just server.py instead. And you look, the code is just Selenium code, if you want it to be. Uh, you can write it, you can use native JavaScript if you want to, but this code could run on a Selenium browser, but it also runs an iPhone native app. And so that brings me to the demo, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna walk through a demo real quick where I'll show you coded two different ways. One is with just native JavaScript, and the second way is using WebDriver. All right. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, if anyone wants the slides, <laughs> Ashley told me to do this. Um, danc-air.local slash slides.pptx if you want to. For those in the back, I've heard you haven't been able to see stuff all day. Now that I've gone through the presentation, um, you could download it. So let's pull up our terminal here. And 
I'll show you this test before I run it. So here we have a test that's just going to, and let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Can people read it now? More? Good? <laughs> Anyways, this just lets you issue, um, it generates two random numbers, puts them in a text field, and hits the calculate sum button. You'll see the app. And you can see here, this is just raw, you know, JavaScript that I'm typing to it. Um, so let's go to that one. Oh, I should dismiss this. And you can see it's booted up our little app here. There's a little slowness right now in the Python version of the code. Uh, if I was using the .NET, you wouldn't see this. It'll compute the sum, and then there we go. We've checked it out, and we validated. But we can also run that same code um, with any Selenium bindings we choose. So I will use the .NET ones. Uh, what? <laughs> it's not a demo unless something goes wrong, right? Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, that's the wrong, that's the wrong file. Um, there we go. <laughs> so we booted up our server now, and it's just like any other web driver server, like Chrome driver. It just sits there waiting for us to come take command of it. And so I will take my programming language of choice, uh, .NET, C Sharp, and I have written just a test using the Selenium bindings. I have no Appium code in here. I just included the remote web driver from Selenium. And I generate two random numbers. I create a new web driver. I fill out the two fields of those random numbers. I uh, click a button, and then done. And this is all using you know send keys and find elements by tag name and stuff that's just you're used to using in Selenium. And I can kick it. <coughs> and once it connects, it will start. Uh, controlling my iPhone app, and now I'm controlling it from .NET, and I don't have to worry about using Python or JavaScript or anything. Anything that has Selenium bindings, PHP, Ruby, whatever you want, just works, and you can just integrate it into your existing grids. All right, and then the last little demo I'm going to show is we provided for, just to be nice, a real-time interpreter so you can sort of play around with stuff as you go. I think I've heard other people say this, but I've struggled to program in languages where I don't have like a command line interpreter. You know, Python is my favorite. So now we booted up the server in the background, you'll see. <laughs> it's there. I'll shrink this window. And uh, we can just type in you know, any JavaScript we want to this, and it'll evaluate it in real time. So I'll just pull some from the test we ran earlier. Uh, web driver, I don't know, JS test this one. So I'll just copy this. And this is just the stuff you get from instruments. I'll actually show you the recorder too. But uh, so right there, I can just call that. Check the value, it runs it in real time. It doesn't have a value right now. Move the browser, sorry. Browser moved. Now I can set the value. I've just set the value. And so you can sort of play around with your test in real time and figure out what you want to do. Um, so that's that. You can you know, run any of the commands on here. You can, anything in there. And then lastly, I'll show you, if you haven't seen UI automation, this is really what it is. I probably should have showed this first. <laughs> oh, those are the dogs. I went for this retro 90s theme in like my presentation, so I was like, oh, I should just take an image and like right click set as desktop wallpaper to like complete the illusion. Um, all right, so here's Xcode. Um, so here's our little test app. And so normally what you would do to write a test with Apple's little framework is you open this little automation widget and instruments and um, Something's still running, that's weird. Anyway, uh, create a test, and then you just hit this record button, and then you go over to your iPhone simulator, and you can, you know, click that, and you'll see it pops you up with a code. So you can just take this code and paste it in or play around with it. 
write your own frameworks. But they provide sort of the Selenium IDE for you. And I'll move back to the slides now. I think we're done with the demo. Oh, one more little demo. So I showed you a really simple one, but at Zeusk we have a lot of tests that already use this. And so this is, a, I showed the same video at a Selenium Conf, but this is one of our more advanced ones. You can see, actually, I'll rewind it in the beginning. This is a edit profile scenario on Zeus. You have like a little date card that you can edit. And you can see that this stuff scales, it's fast. We haven't found anything that we can't do with it yet. Uh, sometimes it requires you know, making your app accessible, which it should be anyway, but usually you can just do whatever you want. And you can see here, we're just editing a date card, setting a bunch of information, and it runs pretty fast. So anyway. That's an example of what we can do with it. And then uh, I'll go back to the slides now. So a few odds and ends. Uh, you know, when you make anything cool, you always make some things that suck before it that inspired what was really cool. So I actually did this whole thing in AppleScript at one point, because like I said, I'm an AppleScript ninja, which is a totally worthless thing to be. but. You can do all of this in AppleScript, but the problem was it wouldn't actually run on a device. If you do it in JavaScript, it will run on a physical device, which is nice. Uh, it was highly sensitive to the versions of iOS and OS X. It just generally wasn't all that reliable. But at the time, like a year and a half ago, you know, there was nothing out there, so it was pretty cool. And the second time, I just tried to do it all in JavaScript, but then I found you couldn't do that. Uh, some interesting things I found, we've coded a lot of these tests. We have a couple dozen of these. Um, Bugs in UI automation cause this one second delay between commands if you don't batch them together. Uh, I think Francois emailed Apple about this and we got some response that I'm suspicious of as to why it can't be fixed. But either way, you can batch commands together to get around it. Or he found out you can actually just set your system clock ahead like a second and it all goes away. <laughs> well, didn't hear that from me. Um, nibs and zibs are supported. I found storyboards are more of a crapshoot, but refer to Apple's accessibility guidelines. That's more of a UI automation bug for anybody, not really specific to this. Um, and just in general, I find the whole Apple accessibility thing to be really tricky. Our devs have gotten good at it, but um, anyway. So if you want to find out more about the project, our URL is right there. We have the nice appium.io. Um, there's a discussion group. Uh, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should walk you through before I take some questions. Uh, I guess I'll sort of show you what we've done with it at Zeusk. Um, let's try this again. I don't think it's going to cooperate. I've had a bad Java day. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. So we've integrated all of this with our existing infrastructure. And I'm going to give you a quick tour of like what we have in Jenkins. And you can see, uh, I'll kick off a job, actually. I made a job, temporary job for this that I'll just fire up in Jenkins. And you will notice uh, we have a lab of Mac minis running Appium. And uh, see there the reindeer, so Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet. So you know, on Dancer, as soon as I say that, it should fire up a test on there. And uh, we run this every day, and we run it hopefully in a couple weeks with every check-in, and we know when something's broken. So come on, <laughs> Jenkins, there we go, Rudolph got a job. Anyway, we have this lab that just sits there, and then sort of like our own Selenium grid. You know, Sauce doesn't yet provide an Appium grid, though I'm, I'm working on Jason. Uh, and so yeah, we just kick off all the tests, and they take you know a couple minutes to run, and then we get a report every day, and we go from there, and uh, let's see. You can sort of see, well, Rudolph was the first one, right? Anyways, in a moment, a job will show up on Rudolph and you'll see it running. But anyway, that's really all I had. So I just reemphasize that the nice thing about Appium is that you have to do nothing to your app, nothing to install it. You can code it just like you code Selenium. Uh, we're looking for some contributors so we can flush out the rest. But as it is now, it's usable. And at Zeus, we've automated anything we've tried to so far. So that's my spiel on Appium, and I hope that some people come and help contribute. <laughs> Are there any questions? There we go. Rudolph is running some kind of test. I don't know what it is, but uh, you can see it's running just like a Selenium test would be. Are there any questions? 
So when you use the kind of Selenium E API, um, how did you map that to the UI automation commands? What kind of schema do you use? Uh, just the general obvious analog. So like tap, there's in the web driver, there's click. <laughs> you know, elements is a good one to find elements on the page. It's not how fully. Do you, how do you find the elements specifically? Uh, you can, in WebDriver, it actually generates like a little structure that contains them all, and you can sort of pull it for them. Uh, with your automation, you just use the recorder tool, or if you're really good, you can just walk the DOM in your head. But there's a click and shoot sort of thing. Cool, thanks. Um, this is more of a general question. Does anyone know what tools do Apple use to automate their own app? I don't believe they do a whole lot of iOS app automation. So yeah, well, I mean, you, what you have done is more. If they did, I imagine they would use this, but I have no insider knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> they would use, not this, UI automation, right? Because they wrote it, and if they don't use it, why should we? <laughs> so actually, I can answer that question. I, I talked to the UI automation manager at WWDC. They have an internal tool, which they don't want to share. Because <laughs> it, it, it has uh, root access to the phone, and they don't want to give that to everyone. So, um, how do you do gestures, or how do you represent those in WebDriver? They're not currently mapped, but someone had told me someone has an idea for doing this. There's like an advanced. Does anyone remember what it is? Advanced user, user interaction sort of area that we. Yeah, there's an API for it. Pico, seriously? <laughs> what was that? Pico? That's right. I, I edit my code in Pine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, for my serious question. So it looks like Appium can be used for testing native applications. Could you use this for testing hybrid applications, too? Why, that's a good question, Jason. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, um, it would require, you have, you have pretty much a black box in the UI web view in the accessibility model. So something like, what's it called, iPhone driver? He was up here earlier. Luke, is that you? Yeah. Actually, you're wrong. I need to show you the demo. Oh, OK. <laughs> ah, if you're going to. Ah, no one told me. Like, yeah, open source is so cool. It's like having a house, and whenever you come home, there's like more rooms. Like, <laughs> apparently, that happened at some point. Nobody told me. <laughs> Yeah. I love how I give a, a definitive, absolutely not. You are wrong, sir. And then you're like, no, you are wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we strike that from Yeah, can we edit that out? <laughs> All right. I think I'm standing between coffee and people. It's a bad place to be. Any other questions? Oh, one more thing. If anyone here is or knows a payment systems testing ninja, we have a job for you at Zeusk. I forgot to plug that. OK. On my team, you could work for me. Testing payment systems. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Dan.